Hello guys, this is Wits Lounge, learning made easy. And in today's video, we are going to be studying the quantities of measurement in chemistry. Do note that the link to the other studies about stoichiometry will be found in the description of this video. What are the quantities of measurement in chemistry? There are four of them, majorly. And what are they? Mountain moles, mass, volume, and number of particles. So let's define them to understand them as we go on in this study. The first thing is a mountain mole. To define a mountain mole, a mole of a substance is simply defined as the quantity of a substance that contains the same elementary entities as that found in 12 grams of common 12 isotope. Now, this seems ambiguous, so let's try to help you understand it. Now, imagine for instance you have a chef and the chef is about to cook. I know you, probably you're a chef. And I ask you a question. What is the number of seasoning cubes required to cook a grain of rice? I did not say a cup, a grain of rice. You will notice that it doesn't make sense to ask that question. Yes, it doesn't. One of my students actually said, just take the grain of rice and rub it on the seasoning cube and then you get the quantity. But that doesn't apply though. My point is this, that asking the question of how many cubes will be used to cook a grain of rice is not so reasonable because the grain of rice is too small. So that same way scientists were able to discover that when you want to perform reactions, reactions actually occur in molecular or atomic basis. However, the atoms and molecules are too small and scientists can't just pick them up because they are too small. Hence, they found a particular quantity um, which would have an equivalent reaction as the atoms and that quantity is what we refer to as the mole. So when I now say how many seasoning cubes are you going to use to cook a cup of rice, it makes sense. Why? The quantity is measurable. It makes sense. So a mole is more like a quantity of matter that has an equivalent reaction as when you are reacting the molecular states. However, they are not the same thing. So with that said, um, the unit of mole is <laughs> still mole, but this time around without the E. So have that in mind. Now, whenever you see 0 0.01 mole, it is talking about the quantity amount in mole. Now, we go to the next concept, which is mass. Mass is simply the quantity of matter contained in a body. So when you are looking at the quantity of matter, you are actually considering the mass. The SI unit of mass is kilogram. However, in chemistry, we are going to be measuring mass in grams because the particles we are dealing with are actually very small. So we're going to be measuring our mass in grams. Before we leave the concept of mass, it is important that you understand a particular term known as molar mass. The molar mass of a substance is simply defined as the mass contained in one mole of that substance. So the mass of one mole of a substance simply describes its molar mass. So when I say what is the molar mass of sodium chloride, I'm looking at the mass contained in one mole. Remember we described the mole as a quantity. So have that in mind, when I find the mass contained in one mole of that substance, it is referred to as the molar mass. Mathematically, if I am to express molar mass, it is going to be given as molar mass, molar mass of element equals relative atomic mass multiplied by atomicity. So when I say ROAM, I mean relative atomic mass. Now, and then also the simplified expression for molar mass of compound is molar mass of compound equals sum of relative atomic masses. So if, for instance, we are looking at this, once you are looking for the molar mass of an element, the molar mass of an element is simply gotten by the relative atomic mass of that element multiplied by the atomicity of the elements. Yeah, you might now be wondering, what do I mean by atomicity? Atomicity is simply the number of atoms found in one molecule of an element. Gaseous elements tend to be diatomic, with the exception of your noble gases. Your metals are usually monatomic. Your non-metals are also usually monatomic. There are some exceptions though. But this will be understood in another video, which is known as the trends of atomicity in elements. Anyway, let's move on. With that said, imagine, for instance, I have a question and I say, what is the molar mass of chlorine gas? How am I supposed to simply do that? First of all, I have to note that the atomic mass of chlorine is equals 35 
5.5 atomic mass of chlorine is equals 35.5 and its atomicity is equals to why because chlorine is a gas and all gaseous elements exist as the atomic molecules so it means that my molar mass of chlorine will now be equals what the atomic mass which is 35.5 multiplied by the atomicity which is 2 hence it's going to be equal 71 gram per mole i didn't mention that earlier but the unit of molar mass is gram per mole but that's not about how to find the molar mass of an element the molar mass of compounds would actually be expressed mathematically differently as molar mass equals sum of relative atomic masses so let's understand what we mean by that imagine we are looking at the molar mass of a compound like h2so4 which is your sulfuric acid the implication is that i'm simply going to add their atomic masses i would have hydrogen but we notice that there are two hydrogen atoms so two times hydrogen plus sulfur which is just one plus oxygen which is four of them four times oxygen and then if i'm to introduce the atomic masses it's going to be two times the atomic mass of hydrogen is one that of sulfur is 32 that of oxygen is 16. so if i happen to do this i'm going to have two times one is two plus 32 plus four times 16 is 64. if i sum them up together i'm going to have 98 gram per mole having said that i presume you understand this concept um, some trial questions are actually on the screen. Try them out and share your answer with us in the comment section. We'll actually respond to them as much as we can. Thank you very much. So, that's that about mass. We describe mass as the quantity of matter. I'm going to have to discuss molar mass as the mass of one mole of a particular substance. If you're dealing with the molar mass of an element, it is equals the relative atomic mass of that element multiplied by its atomicity. But when you're dealing with that of a compound, mathematically it is simply expressed as the sum of relative atomic masses in the constituent compound. Thank you very much. With that said, we go to the next quantity, which is volume. What is volume? Volume of a compound is simply the space occupied by that compound. Yes, and we have so many units to measure volume. We have the cm cube, we have the dm cube, we have the meter cube, we have the liter, we have the centiliter, the milliliter, and all what's not, depending on the parts of the world that you are existing in. Our curriculums actually differ, so it depends on what curriculum is used in your school. In parts like Nigeria and the UK, we use the cm cube and the dm cube. In America, liter, centiliter, milliliter is more or less used. So, whichever one, just note that whenever you see any of these quantities measured, or mentioned, I meant to say, you are talking about volume. Now, having mentioned volume, it is important you understand what a molar volume is. The molar volume of a substance is simply the volume of one mole of a substance at STP. So when you're considering the molar volume of a gas, it is simply the volume of one mole of a gas at STP. It has a constant value of 22.4 dm cube per mole or 22,400 cmq per mole before i leave the concept of volume i would like to also explain how to convert volume in cmq to volume in dmq before i do that the first thing i would like us to understand if we look at the screen is that there is a simple relationship between the different quantities or the different units of volume first of all is that 1000 cm cubes is equivalent to one dm cube we would also have that one dm cube is equivalent to one liter which implies that 1000 cm cube is equivalent to one liter and with that said you would have that 1000 milliliter is equals one liter and because 1000 milliliter is equals one liter we we'll have that one cm cube is equals one milliliter these are actually simple relations between the different quantities however the unit I'm going to emphasize on is cm cube and dm cube. So, the relationship between volume in cm cube and volume in dm cube is simply expressed by this mathematical expression. Volume in cm cube is equals volume in dm cube multiplied by 1000, while volume in dm cube is equals volume in cm cube all over 1000. Okay, let me make this like, yeah. So, you have that. 
that whenever you want to convert a particular volume in CMQ to DMQ, we use this second formula. While if you want to convert a volume in DMQ to CMQ, you use the first formula. So let's try out this question to understand what we just discussed. Convert the following volumes in CMQ to DMQ. We have number one. The first thing we are going to convert is 200 CMQ. Number two is 500 CMQ. Number three is 22,400 CMQ. I'm going to try out the first one while you try out the second and the third one in this video. Okay, so remember that when we want to convert a volume in CMQ to DMQ, it is giving us volume in DMQ equals volume in CMQ divided by 1000. Very simple, right? So our volume in DMQ for the first one is simply going to be 200 CMQ divided by 1000. Cancel, 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 point goes ahead. And then we have volume in DMQ is going to be equals 0 0.2 DMQ. So that's quite simple. So try the rest of them and put your answers in the comment section. The fourth quantity of measurement we are going to be discussing is number of particles. So first of all, what is a particle? What are particles? Particles are the constituent of a substance and there are three particles of matter in chemistry. Atoms, molecules and ions. So whenever you are looking at the number of these three particles in a substance, you are simply measuring by the number of particles. According to Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's law, you would find out that the number of particles in one mole of a substance is equals 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 particles. So you have that. And that is known as Avogadro's constant. The number of particles found in one mole of a substance is referred to as Avogadro's constant. Thank you very much for watching this introductory video of this concept of stoichiometry. Hope you learned a lot. Remember, this is Witzland, learning.